Who's on the ship? Where's Bob? Get him to escort them off the ship. Lou, where are you? Lou turned from the bank of lights and ran to Vic's side. What can I do, sir? Just be ready. We might need to get back to the ship. Fast. Vic put his hand to his ear and tried to hear anything else. Muffin? Victor, the men from the police cruiser are on board. They're looking at the cargo. Strap it down. Put a field around it so they don't get in there. We still need to deliver that. While you're at it, close up all the doors. I thought you didn't like the doors on the ship closed. Vic looked at June and Joey and shook his head. Muffin, please close the doors. All the doors. Don't open them until they're off the ship. One of them is in the weapons locker. Should I shut him in there? I don't think that would be very nice. Muffin! Fire drill! Get him out of there! Victor, there's no fire in the weapons locker. We went through this earlier. If they're... Muffin! Fire! Drill! Now! How could he get the computer to understand how urgent this was? It had to work. It always worked on Dexter. Well, except for the last time Vic tried. That didn't matter. Muffin had to flush the fire extinguishers to get those three out of the locker room. Victor, that wasn't very nice. Did you get the officer out of the weapons locker? Yes, Victor. They're all standing in the cargo hold now. Are all the doors locked? You closed and locked all the doors inside the ship, right? I found Bob. Muffin beeped. I didn't ask about Bob, did I? I asked if you closed and secured all interior doors. The pause drove him nuts. All Muffin had to do was secure the inside of the ship and the cargo. If Beeford and his men wandered around inside the ship, that wasn't fine. The last thing he needed was officers roaming around inside his ship. Not that they'd find anything, but it was his ship. Muffin! Victor, something isn't working properly. I closed the doors, but one of these men has a... Muffin's voice disappeared into an electronic garble and came back. I don't think... The feedback over the earpieces had them all reaching for the ears and pulling the devices out. Vic slammed his to the ground. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Vic wanted to yell at someone and June was standing close enough. It had been her fault they didn't go straight back to the ship anyway. They're going to confiscate the acid rat and we'll be stranded here. I hope this is what you were hoping to accomplish. Vic, you jackass. They're not going to get out. Plu 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 can we keep the portals at the poles closed until we figure out a solution? The Bob's eyes went white before it answered. Most assuredly, do you think this will help us resolve our crisis? I think this has become a crisis. Our star had lost nearly 80% of its power. When the portals are opened, we are supposed to bring in more matter from our home star. But our home star has disappeared. Vic hated being in this position. Nothing like this would have happened if he just decided to take a short vacation. But no. He got greedy. Again. He thought just one more trip. It was so easy to pick up these planets and bring them in to be processed. What was the harm in grabbing one more? It gave June and Joey some time together, allowed the kid to do some studying about the new world in which he lived, allowed them all to get comfortable together. Sure, he knew they were passing by Bamda but that didn't seem like so much of an issue. Argmon had always steered them far enough around before. It just happened to be a problem this time. And why? What were the odds they'd pick up and tow a planet with an entire civilization inside? What do they do now? What could they do? Sheriff Justice would do one of two things. First, he'd call Vic and demand he surrender, and the crew would do some time. The other, and worst possibility, was that Justice and his two officers piloted their way out of the planet, leaving Vic, Argmon, and the rest deserted inside to seek an answer. They didn't even know how advanced the technology of the civilization was. It had managed to surround and isolate itself from the rest of the galaxy. For all they knew, they were just a backwards community that couldn't fend for itself or even defend itself. Vic! June yelled. He looked up from the destroyed earpiece. What? We need to get back to the ship. We need to make sure they don't take it. She grabbed his arm and tried to pull him. She'd gone from trying to save the planet to trying to get off the planet in such a short time. Vic had done the opposite. Plu, you can open those portals at will to allow energy from your home star to come in, right? That is correct. Close them up. Don't let them open anymore. But our energy reserves are low. We cannot leave them closed. I'm guessing that it takes energy to open them. So, for now, leave them closed. That'll buy us some time. 
The thing didn't move. It just stared at Vic with those large, unblinking eyes. I need to get to my ship. I'm guessing that our good old sheriff has figured out how to make it take off by now, and he and his little cruiser have flown the coop. Plue's eyes clouded over. Vic guessing this must be how it found out information. It was just unclear how. Indeed, you are correct. It appears they were able to get the smaller ship and the large ship, and both have taken to the sky. What should I do? Vic looked at the crew. They now had two problems. They needed to take care of, and not much time to take care of either. He needed to come up with a plan quickly, and he needed Joey to make sure that what he was thinking would be viable. First, they had to get to the ship. Do you have anything we can fly? I'd like to take my crew up to recapture our ship. Plue looked at the ground. This was the first time its eyes had looked somewhere else and not clouded over. Slowly the eyes rose, and it looked at each of them in turn. Vic felt nervous, being looked over in such a manner. A tingle started in the back of his mind and pushed through his body. He tried to fight it, but when he relaxed and allowed it to work through his entire body, everything felt somewhat easier. He tried to take slow, deep breaths, but a tightness caught in his chest. Finally, it felt as if June slapped him in the face again, and he could breathe normally. I have all the information that I need. I now understand what you, June Miller, and Joey Provosky have been trying to tell me. Our home star is far away, and it is because you brought my planet here. That is why our star is failing, and we are unable to gather more energy from our home star. Sheriff Buford T. Justice also tried to explain this, but I did not fully understand. I now know what he means by a crime. Vic didn't like where this was going. It could end up much worse than just going to jail for a little while. The blob continued. I also understand that I do not have sufficient ability to restore my planet to its rightful home. I am dependent on you to assist me with that. I fear I have a quandary. I have taken the liberty to scan all of your biological functions. Victor Gallegos, I have also scanned that of your crew. Fuel for your bodies is being brought as well as water. Once you have eaten, I will take steps to assist you in getting your ship back, and will continue to aid you in avoiding Sheriff Buford T. Justice and his officers. You must aid me in returning my planet to its home star. Do we have an accord? What could he say? What could he do? There was no choice. It wasn't that they couldn't have gotten away on their own, but they did get Plu stuck in the situation. They had to get him out of it. He looked at June with his I told you so smile. He could still feel the burn on his cheek where she'd slapped him. Sir, what do we do? Lou shifted from one foot to the other. I, I don't know what's going on. This is all new to me. I, I need to do something. Keep moving. I, I don't know. I just, I just can't stand here and wait. Eep, eep, eep. June took a couple of steps back and put her arms around Joey. Argmont chuffed and nodded his head. What do we do? Vic said. Your fuel is here. Based on your physiology, it will satisfy you. Water has also arrived. Once you have had your fill, we will discuss specifics. I have instructed the scientists to continue to monitor the star. Keep the portals closed and watch your ship. Please, eat, and I will make preparations. Plue's eyes clouded over. All Vic could concentrate on was the sled, with enough food and water to take care of Lou Hu's entire battalion and still have enough left over. Dig in, guys. We've got some work ahead of us. They all needed help to get onto the sled. Even once they were on the sled, there was the matter of everything being far too large for them to handle. The container of water easily held over a hundred gallons, and they needed to take turns boosting each other to drink from it. The food must have been some type of vegetable. Lou helped by cutting into the fibrous red logs. Once through a thick skin, they were able to expose a pink flesh beneath. It was mild, sweet flavor that not only refreshed but satisfied far more than the big blob could know. No one cared how much slurping noise they made. Everyone just ate and ate. Vic turned around to see where the blob had gotten off to, and realized several more blobs had come into the room. All of them appeared to be guards, judging by the spears they carried. A low rumbling filled the room, and the ones without spears turned away from their controls. Plue didn't appear to be anywhere. The blobs all stood in a circle. Vic guessed they must be talking. Sir, did you want any more? Lou stood with his knife in one hand, covered in pink juice. I'm good. Vic waved to Lou to go back to whatever he'd been doing and stood watching the big blobs. 
One of the guards, Vic wondered if it had been the one on the sled with them, came over. A thick tentacle emerged from its midsection and lowered onto the sled. Eyes appeared, and a smaller blob took shape. It detached from the tentacle. As the blob moved forward, the tentacle disappeared back into the guard. Please, Victor Callegos, we must talk. I have brought more, so that each of you may be able to participate. Vict walked over to Plu. At least, that's who it must be. Participate how? I have studied your physiology. You will be able to enter a guard, as I have done. You will be able to control the being from inside and use the devices as we do. They will be able to assist in your understanding of our technology. This will allow you to come to a solution quicker before the star degrades further and we are all at risk of destruction. You've been listening to Hollow, v Shipping, Book 2, written and read by J.R. Murdoch. For more information about this production and its author, visit jrmurdoch.com. There are a lot of ways you can choose to spend your time. Thank you for choosing to spend it with me.